Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, June 10th, 2020, and I'm actually pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, June 11th. Futures, uh, not doing a whole lot after uh, hours. We did have a mixed market today. We had the Fed meet. Uh, NASDAQ stocks certainly outperformed today. Kind of a go back, kind of went back to where we were a couple months ago when uh, NASDAQ stocks started taking off. And we really struggled and down the S&P on a relative basis. It's exactly what we saw today. Um, but uh, I'm going to get into all that in a minute. Um, we're going to start the show with uh, the daily market recap. Uh, talking technically, I'm going to take a look at a couple of um, price relative charts, kind of showing you what's been going on, uh, the Dow versus the NASDAQ, the uh, value stocks versus the growth stocks. And uh, things kind of took a turn here over the last couple of days. And after the Fed announcement at two o'clock, I saw once again, more money rotating towards growth, towards NASDAQ. So I'll show you that on a chart. Um, gonna get into some chart breakouts, companies breaking out today. Uh, some of the recent leaders throughout the pandemic uh, re saw renewed bids today, jumped, went through some uh, old highs. So we'll go through those. Then I'm gonna show you some stocks on the cusp of a breakout. Uh, companies that are right at the threshold, look like they're ready to make a breakout. Uh, certainly stocks to keep an eye on if you like to play breakouts. Then uh, earnings spotlight, not a whole lot going on tonight, but we'll preview a couple big companies that will be reporting tomorrow. And then we'll wrap the show up with three you must see. And I took a look at some stocks that had been struggling throughout the pandemic, came to life, um, but then so many of those stocks got hit. And so the question is, you know, do you have any trust or am, am, do I trust any of those stocks? And I was going through the list and I, first of all, I think the market goes higher. So I think there's going to be a lot of stocks that will do okay. But on a relative basis, there are probably very few after this huge run up in some of these beaten down stocks, probably very few that I would be comfortable holding um, and thinking I could beat the S&P 500 going forward. And so I'm going to go over a few of those to uh, wrap up the show. So we'll, I'll take a look at that in you know, a little different angle in the three you must see. All right, before I get in, into any of that, I do want to just remind everyone, you can go to earningsbeats.com, sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. I publish it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the mornings, usually before the market opens. All you have to do is go to earningsbeats.com, type in your name, email address, hit the subscribe button, you'll be good to go, no credit card required. Uh, another reason to make sure you're signed in here and part of our Earnings Beats community is we are going to do an event on Monday. Uh, this will be uh, Monday, June 15th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to basically be scanning against our chart list. So I want to show you some of the scans and how I'm approaching this market right now. I think it's really important that you do your homework and you be ready because this market is shifting back and forth. And when you see it shift a certain way, you want to have your, your homework done, your chart list ready, your scans ready and quickly identify some trades uh, that can work out. That's uh, uh, been something that's really worked out for us well over the past few months. And even this week, as the market quickly changed, we were quickly changing with it. So that event's gonna be on Monday, uh, June 15th, 4.30 p.m. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss it, subscribe to the newsletter. We'll certainly be making sure that all of our community members get access to the link so that they can come join us in the uh, webinar on Monday. All right, let's talk a little bit about the action Wednesday. We did have a Fed meeting, and at uh, two o'clock, the Fed had their latest policy statement. I was pretty sure they weren't gonna do anything to disrupt uh, the equity markets, especially here in the US, and they didn't. Uh, in, fa in fact, Fed uh, Chair Jerome Powell indicated that uh, the Fed now believes that interest rates are going to remain near zero through 2022. I can only tell you that I personally wouldn't want to be invested in bonds when I'm essentially earning zero. Um, when I can invest in companies that are growing their earnings with interest rates near zero, those earnings are extremely valuable. I think that is going to create um, a much bigger increase in terms of the, the PE ratio of the market as we go forward. 
And uh, as money rotates away from the treasuries, I think you're going to see that money flying into the equity market. So I, I'm very bullish equities. Uh, I think that what uh, the Fed had to say today really uh, just kind of confirmed what I already knew and what the markets already know. And that is that the Fed's going to do whatever it can to promote growth. That's their job. And they now see 2021 GDP being 5%. 5% growth with zero interest rates? Are you kidding me? Market's going higher. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at what happened on Wednesday. You see the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 282 points. We had a big rally. Saw some pullback here the last couple of days. Also had mentioned to Earnings Beats members earlier this week, we're in this period of the calendar month, the 7th to the 10th of the month, where we typically see profit taking. So I'm not at all surprised that we're seeing a little bit of selling. There were also negative divergences on the hourly charts on both the Dow and the S&P. So short-term pullback, short-term selling, I mean, this really has been nothing. Uh, the S&P 500 down about a half a percent, 17 points. NASDAQ though, the leader, up 66 points, up two thirds of 1%. Mid caps got hit, small caps got hit. This is kind of sounding eerily similar to what we went through back in March and April when uh, the uh, Dow, S&P, mid cap, small caps, un, all underperformed the NASDAQ. And that's exactly what we saw here on Wednesday, especially after the two o'clock announcement by the Fed. Technology, among the sectors, technology was your leader, gaining 1.67%. Um, and you look across the rest of these sectors that were leading, they're all down, but they're just down less than the overall market. So healthcare was down 0.16%. But on a relative basis, that's much better than the Dow's 1% loss or the mid caps 2.5, small caps 3.5. So on a relative basis, healthcare did very well. Staples, um, communication services, and utilities round out the top five sectors. All in all, I actually thought it was a pretty good day. I mean, the market's been overbought. We could have had a big sell-off today. Uh, you know, buy on the rumor, sell on the news with the Fed coming out and essentially confirming what we all for the most part, suspected, which is that they are going to support the U.S. equity market as best they can. And some might think that's unfair, but I think it's their job. Um, that's what they do. Um, you know, they, that's their mandate. Um, they want to maximize employment and they want to keep inflation under control. And there's no inflation. So if there's no, we had a, the, the May CPI came out today and core CPI, both were negative. When you don't have inflation, you don't have to worry about growth. Um, growth is a problem when the economy starts to overheat and your inflation starts to move higher. As long as we don't have the, that threat, I think you're gonna see rates stay low. And if the economy can grow, and especially if the economy can grow 5% next year, if that turns out to be a true statement with interest rates at zero, um, <laughs> I wouldn't wanna be short in this market, that's for sure, just my opinion. All right, let's keep moving. Take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield with that uh, Fed announcement today. You can see the yield pulling back. I was thinking 0.75% would be a pullback. We came back pretty quickly. I think now the question is, do we hold here? Um, the market had a couple hours to kind of digest the Fed announcement. We did close near the low of the day. But this is an area, you know, when you make a breakout, you come back, you test that rising 20-day moving average. This could be where the yields move back up. If they do, It'll be very interesting to see whether or not financials and industrials can outperform the S&P 500 because they should in a rising rate environment. That's what they did when we broke out here. We pulled back, they underperformed. Now, if we move back to the upside, do we get that relative bid in financials and industrials? That's something I'll be watching pretty closely on Thursday. So you wanna keep an eye on that. Um, but otherwise, I, at this point, I would still say we're in an uptrend in the 10-year treasury yield until we fall below that 20-day and, and the uh, uh, price support, yield support that we had there at 0 0.75 on this breakout. Until we fall below that level, I would just con con uh, consider this just to be a pullback in the yield to test that yield support. All right, let's move on to talking technically. Um, here is a chart, this goes back the last few months, four months. And I just wanted you to see what's been going on in terms of the, the uh, Dow Jones performance relative to the NASDAQ 100. So the Diamonds DIA tracks the Dow and the QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100. So this is just a relative chart of what has been going on. 
And you can see that we have periods, you know, like, nice little period here where the Dow outperformed. And then just recently, nice little ABC. Here was a nice little ABC, ABC. Um, just a correction of this downtrend. And now we're rolling back over again. And I think that this is a theme that you want to continue to concentrate on because the NASDAQ 100 is loaded with those companies that can grow earnings rapidly. And with interest rates near zero and a GDP projected by the Fed to be maybe 5% next year, it's those high growth companies that are going to be rewarded. If they, can, if they continue to produce, I believe that's the index that's going to continue to outperform. So that's where I want some exposure. I want quite a bit of exposure for me personally. Now it's taking a little bit more of an aggressive stance. I would just simply say this, if you're going to invest outside the NASDAQ 100, do it with leaders. Make sure that the stocks you own are leading their industry groups and are outperforming the S&P 500 and their management teams are executing. They're, they're beating their top line estimates. They're beating their bottom line estimates. You know, investing is not rocket science. It really isn't. It's about finding the best stocks and the best industry groups in the market so that you can outperform the S&P 500. Otherwise, put all your money in the spider and just go golfing. No point in trying to invest in individual stocks or in ETFs if you can't beat the S&P 500. All right, down on the bottom here of this chart, this little panel down here is value stocks versus growth stocks. And you can see it looks very, very similar to the Dow versus the NASDAQ. Here you've got that ABC correction, otherwise downtrending. Here we just went through an ABC correction, downtrending. I mean, these two charts look very similar. They paint the same picture. And so I think it's worthwhile watching this until we get into a confirmed uptrend. And when I say a confirmed uptrend, what I wanna see is a configuration where this relative price line is above the 20 day and the 20 day is above the 50 day. And the PPO, relative PPO is positive. We almost got there, didn't quite get there. Now we're back below the 20, which is below the 50. That is not where we wanna be. So this little movement here over the last couple of days did some damage for these stocks. The, you know, the more cyclically sensitive, the value stocks, those are the ones I'm talking about that took on some technical damage on a relative basis. Now, some of them still look okay on a technical chart, but on a relative basis, they definitely took on a little damage today. Now, this is the four month chart. I wanna show you an intraday chart. So this just goes back the last four days and it's a five minute chart. And so you can see we were hanging in the diamonds versus the QQQ up here. We were, we were doing pretty well in the first 45 minutes on Monday. Same thing with the IWD versus the IWF. So that's value versus growth. But check out what's happened since, I mean, Again, these last couple of days, this shows you the rotation that's taking place in the market. And so if you're trying to still make money with the same stocks you made money on at the end of last week, or even the last couple of weeks up until Monday morning, you probably found it very difficult to do so, and you probably had a reversal of fortunes. You've got to, you know, I was trading a few of those stocks in the, you know, in the diamonds and in the, the S&P 500 that had been lagging for a while. But I was telling members, make sure you keep your stops below. Uh, for me, I was using prior day lows. So as long as those stocks were moving up, I was fine. But as soon as they showed any kind of weakness to the downside and took out the prior day's low, I had my stop in. Did not want to ride them back down. And that's what we've been seeing. We've been seeing these stocks moving back down on a relative basis. But notice after two o'clock today, uh, two o'clock was the announcement. That's where the Fed came out with their meeting. We went down initially came back up and it looked like, oh, you know, maybe these stocks are going to get a bid after the Fed. And then for the next two hours, right into the close, we went down again. Same thing with value versus growth. So this is important because I think it's telling us that right now we want to be in those growth areas. And I know it gets confusing in the very near term because we're having a little bit of whipsaw here. We had growth leading, then we had value leading. Now we've got growth leading again. But as a short-term trader, you've got to be nimble and ready to move with the market. I mean, it doesn't do you any good to ride those diamond stocks or the S&P 500, those laggards, to the upside if you're going to ride them right back down. Short-term, that doesn't make any sense to me. So make sure you've got your stops in play and pay attention to these ratios. They'll, they'll tell you a little bit about where you want to have your money from a short-term perspective. 
All right, let's keep moving on. I'm going to move into chart breakouts. I want to go through some of these charts I think that uh, looked really good uh, today. One of the stocks that I like a lot is Lavango Health. This is in the software space and it had been consolidating. We had this move up and when growth began underperforming back in mid-May, look what LVGO did. It didn't do anything horrible. I mean, I think it's just consolidating. We had equal highs. We had rising lows. That's an ascending triangle. So it's still in a bullish pattern, but it was taking a back seat. And so what was happening is a lot of money was getting frustrated in LVGO and they would sell and then we'd come roaring back. And then all of a sudden we wouldn't make the breakout. We'd move back down, sell again. And that money was helping to fuel other areas of the market. Well, today we saw some of that change again. And you see LVGO breaking out to a new high while money is rotating away from those prior laggards that had been moving the last couple of weeks. Now they're starting to lag again. So got to watch this rotation in the market. But LVGO, I think on this breakout looks pretty good. Um, ServiceNow, NOW, another one that had been sideways consolidating. Notice when we pulled back, we came right back to this prior area of breakout. Uh, so we had resistance just below 360. We broke out above that 360 level, came back down intraday into the 350s a few times, but we were holding. Today, we break out to a new high. Very, very bullish action on NOW. Tesla, one of my favorite stocks. Been talking about this one for a long time. I think it's going a lot higher. Um, it broke out today. I think it broke out back on Monday when it closed at an all-time high. But if you look intraday and you're looking at this high in February, well, we took that out today and volume picked up. Tesla looks really good here. Electronic Arts. EA, uh, breakout. Another one that moved up, pulled back. We held support around 112, maybe 111. Went back down there again just, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago. Well, today, after four days of moving to the upside, we finally made the breakout today on Electronic Arts. Notice the volume picked up, highest volume so far in June. A uh, small company for you here, Fuel Cell. Fuel Cell Energy. Uh, this was a stock moved up back in January, consolidated for quite a while. Today, it just absolutely exploded. Look at the volume pick up over 50 million shares today as it made this breakout above this triple top at about the 280 area, maybe a little above 280. Today, it left no doubt, $3.37 on the close. IDXX. IDEX Labs came back down, tested that 20-day, which has been a great area. Anytime we've gotten close to that 20-day, it's been a buy on IDEX Labs. Well, today, stock moved up more than 6%, broke out above that early June high. Microsoft, ever heard of this one? Pretty good software company. And uh, Microsoft, if I get this chart to come up, there we go. Um, notice the high back in February. Went down, came all the way back up in that V bottom, sideways for a while, rising lows, equal highs, made a short-term breakout, but then this move today with the volume increasing over 40 million shares, actually over 43 million shares, we took out that February high. Nice breakout for Microsoft. NVIDIA, another favorite stock of mine going forward. I really like this breakout today. Look at the volume pick up on it. Again, it consolidated, went back to the breakout area, tested the 20-day, nothing bad. It just took a back seat for a, a couple of weeks. Well, today it jumped back in the front seat, uh, broke out, and video looks good. SPNS, uh, this is one that had broken out on a closing basis above the 27 level back on Monday, but kind of like Tesla, if you're looking intraday, we finally cleared that intraday uh, high from back in May, did it on a closing basis today. Uh, this is one that doesn't trade a lot of volume, so it may not appeal to a lot of folks. It wouldn't appeal to me for that reason. But I saw it, thought I would still mention it. And then the last one I had for today is uh, T-Mobile. T-Mobile, this is a stock I picked up pretty early back during the pandemic. I thought it performed pretty well on a relative basis. When it was going down, you can see its accumulation distribution kept going up. Well, it's continued to go up and it broke out again today. So T-Mobile, I think, continues to look strong as well. All right, so those are the breakouts. How about on the cusp? What is on the cusp of a breakout? Well, let's take a look at some of these stocks. AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. It's trying. Got up above 58 in February. Got up above 58 in April. Today, it was up to 59 even and then came back down. Failed to make that breakout. But equal highs, rising lows. I don't know if this one makes the breakout tomorrow, but it certainly looks like it is heading for a breakout in time. 
PAYC, another one on the cusp. The high back in February, just over 340. Today's high, 336.86. Been moving up, would be nothing wrong if it were to pull back, maybe get a 20-day test, so I'd keep that in mind. But I like this one to eventually make that breakout. Clorox. After a big move up back in March, uh, stock went up to the 210 area, a little above intraday. We got a close there uh, about two or three weeks ago. And then when the market shifted, this is when we saw Clorox move back twice down around that 195 area, hit the 50 day. And now here in just three days this week, we've moved all the way back up to 207, threatening that breakout above 210. Watch for that. Moody's MCO. Another one, you can see the high back in February, the huge drop. Now we've made our way all the way back up. Um, back at the end of last week, we got to about 284. We have not had a close over 285. Uh, this is one that seems to just be consolidating here right beneath that breakout level. Keep an eye on Moody's. ABBV, another biotech. Biotechs, I'm ready for this group to, to make that breakout. Uh, ABV, ABBV, uh, shooting star. Uh, Doji really here made the breakout look like it had it easy and then came back down close near the low of the day and just above that area so technically it's a breakout but I don't like that candle I think that could lead to a 20-day test but if it did I think this looks like a good stock I do eventually expect it back up over $100. Akamai AKAM after the huge move up back in April put in a double bottom here in the 94-95 area Starting to work its way back up, tested the 50-day, but I see a stock that needs to get this breakout above 107, 108. I think it's coming, but still got a little work to do here. Microchip. This is a stock that has rapidly improved in the semiconductor area. So here is microchip divided by the semiconductor index, and it had been downtrending for a while, but we put in this double bottom, and then you can see trying to get through this prior relative top here, well, we finally did it over the last couple of weeks. The problem is here, we got a false breakout and I think we're consolidating. If we happen to work our way into this gap support area, and I'm thinking 97 and a half or down to that 20 day moving average, I think that would be a great opportunity on microchip. So, uh, and I think that's going to be just prior to seeing a breakout. I expect that microchip will break out again. All right, let's move on. How about earnings spotlight? Not a whole lot going on after hours tonight, so not really anything to report on there. Um, but tomorrow, we do have a few reports, I think, that are worth taking a look at. Um, software regaining some steam, and we got a big one coming out tomorrow, Adobe Systems. Adobe Systems will be reporting after the close on Thursday, and the stock has made a breakout. I mean, we're talking about a pretty good stock. Software broke out. Adobe is broken out on a relative basis. This is a stock now that's been going up relative to the software index for about the last 10 weeks or so. It's been outperforming the S&P 500. I think that software stocks could take a cue from Adobe. So I would be very interested to watch this stock on Thursday after the close. Let's see what kind of market reaction we get. Uh, any kind of a 20-day test, if it is a buy on rumor, sell on news kind of event, I like it on the 20-day moving average. You can see since the early part of April, any 20-day test has been a buy on Adobe. So until that changes, I would continue to use that trading strategy. Another company reporting tomorrow, and I got to say, this is probably my favorite stock in the clothing and accessories area. Lululemon, uh, this has been one that even during the pandemic, a lot of the clothing and accessory stocks, I mean, if you look at clothing, see how it took this big dive and then it took eight weeks, you know, just to go up a little bit. Well, during those eight weeks, Lululemon almost broke out to a new high. So look at the relative strength on this stock. It has been flying relative to the clothing and accessories area. It was breaking out to new highs relative to the S&P back in April and May, back when its industry group, its peers, were on the verge of setting new lows versus the S&P. So just think about that for a minute. You're, you're part of a group that is underperforming the S&P 500 by a wide margin, and you are outperforming it by a wide margin. So one of the things I've kept saying is you want to be in a stock like this if the group begins to come back. Well, the group started to come back. Look at it on a relative basis and look at Lululemon. I mean, it has just exploded to the upside. 
Now, we've got a lot of good news built into this stock, and the earnings are going to be out tomorrow after the bell. I don't know what the earnings are going to be. I suspect that we are going to get a good report from Lululemon, but that doesn't mean we go higher. Short term, I think there's some risk in this stock simply because it's gone from 230 to 320 in the last four weeks. So, you know, this is a, a company that probably it would it would actually help if we'd see a little consolidation. So I'm not going to just run out and just, you know, say, hey, jump into Lululemon after this kind of a huge run. But I don't argue with relative strength. This is one of the best stocks in the market. Um, I think you're going to get a good report. And if it pulls back, probably going to be an opportunity to get in. The last one I wanted to talk about that reports tomorrow is PVH. This is PVH Corp. We did get a breakout here above this double, triple top 50 to 55 area. It was really a tough area to get through. We finally got through, and now we're pulling back. We went all the way to 70. I mean, some of the moves on these stocks, this is actually a small, a minor gain compared to some of the companies. But we went up a lot, and so now we're pulling back. Money's rotating into some of the better areas of the market. But PVH, I think gap support, price support, 20-day, all of that comes in 53 to 57 area. So that's where I'd be looking for PVH maybe to make a reversal. Will it be with earnings? I don't know. We'll have to watch and see. All right, let's move on. Let's wrap this thing up. Three you must see. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to show you my weak AD chart list, the weak accumulation distribution chart list, because this is where I picked the three you must see from. Now, if I pull this up in summary form for today, you're going to see a lot of these companies. There's 268 stocks on this list. And just look at how many of them were down big time today. These are the stocks that were doing worse on a relative basis during the pandemic. These were the stocks that were soaring the last two weeks up until Monday morning. And these are now the stocks that are getting hammered again this week. So what I wanted to do was to look through and try to find the ones on this list that might make some sense as we go forward. So the first one on this list that I thought looked kind of interesting was GPI, which is Group 1 Automotive. I'll show it to you on a relative basis. Number one, the volume trends are good. The stock made a breakout. It pulled back, made another breakout. Uh, I think it's trending above the 20-day moving average, which is above the 50. You know, when you look at the specialty retail group, it's been a pretty good group. So this one seems to be coming to life. This is something I could get behind as long as I can get in with a fairly tight stop. That's going to be the important part. Next up, El Dorado Resorts, ERI. Um, I actually sent this one out to members a while back um, in the gambling space because it was one of the leaders in the gambling area. It was one of the leaders before the pandemic, went straight down, and now it's been rallying back. And you can just see the relative strength improving on this stock. So coming back down, testing the 20-day, it also bounced off the 20-day today. Not too many stocks in this week uh, AD chart list did that. So I find that to be somewhat bullish. And then the last one I have is Aaron Rents, AAN. Um, another one that's been performing really well, good volume trends, the relative strength's been picking up. Keep an eye on relative strength. If a stock's been going up just because everything's going up, that doesn't mean much to me. But if it's been going up consistently on a relative basis, then maybe the worst is behind the stock. And on a pullback, maybe watch that 20-day moving average. All right, everybody have a great day. Enjoy your trading on Thursday. Happy trading, everybody. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.